In this video tutorial, we will build the diagram you see on your screen. It consists of custom nodes that include several text components. The nodes change color when the user hovers over them. The direct incoming and outgoing link or links of the node get highlighted. The diagram uses the zoom control, which allows users to magnify the chart. The diagram uses the tree layout and a feature called assistant nodes. We start by copying the JavaScript files that we need in the scripts subfolder of an empty folder called the UniChart. The files, MindFusion, Diagramming, and Common are found inside the JSPack distribution archive, which you can download from our website. We create an empty web page and save it in the directory of the project. In the web page, just before the closing body tag, we add references to the two JavaScript files and also a reference to another file, UniChart. This will be a new JS file, which will hold the code for our application. We create it and save it in the project directory. Then we add a div element and make a canvas inside it. The div element takes the whole page and the canvas will be used by the diagram to render itself onto. It is important that we provide the canvas an ID. In our code behind file, we first add some class mappings. We map the names of classes that we will use so we can refer to them without the namespace reference. These classes include events, theme, style, rect, and more. Now we declare a global variable diagram which will represent the diagram control instance. We create a new diagram using the reference to the canvas element from the HTML file. We create the diagram in the document DOM content loaded event. If we open our web page, you can see that its content is actually the diagram canvas and you can start drawing flowcharts on it. Even with the modes code we've written so far, thanks to the diagramming library, we have a working diagram application. We start to build now the Dean node class, whose instances are the nodes that build our chart. The Dean class is based on composite node. This is a class that allows nodes to be built by different elements. The first element that we use is Simple Panel. There are various components that you can use in a composite node. Stack Panel, Grid, Text, Image. Any component can have a name and has a children property. There we list its content. In our case, the Simple Panel has a rect inside. A Simple Panel places all its children one above the other. We declare a grid panel, but it will be drawn onto the rect, not under it, but this is exactly what we want. The grid panel has two rows. One takes all the space, and the second is only two points wide. The little one will be used for the colored line that appears at the bottom of each node. The first row will hold a vertical stack panel, where the text components will be. Inside the grid panel, we place this stack panel with vertical orientation. We specify that it occupies the first grid row and that its orientation is vertical. The children of the stack panel are three text components. They use the auto property filed, which means that setter methods will be auto generated using the name of the property. We set different font to the three text components and default text. We add the second component in the grid, the rect that represents the colored line at the bottom of the node. We set its pen and brush to red and mark it also as auto property. With that we are done defining the custom Dean node class. Now we will set the new Dean node class as the node type for new nodes drawn by the diagram. 
if we refresh the page and draw new nodes, you can see that now they are of the Dean node type. Let's create now the nodes for the university departments. We do this in a method called create nodes. In it, we have various arrays with the faculties and the departments. We create the nodes in a new method, which takes as parameters the name of the faculty and its departments. We use the setter methods that were auto-generated for the text components by their name. The brush and pen of the rect at the bottom are set by getting the rect component and then accessing those two fields. Note the layout traits property that we set. This field of the diagram item class allows us to apply additional layout settings, which will be considered by our chosen layout algorithm. Here we indicate that the tree layout assistant should align the node to the left. Then we set an ID to the node and add it to the diagram. After we've created the nodes for the departments, we create one more node, the node for the dean. Then we use the factory helper class of the diagram control to create links between each department node and the dean. We've created this way all nodes and links among them. Now if we refresh the page you will see them. You actually see only two nodes but these are multiple nodes on top of each other because we've created them with the same bounds. What we will do now is to apply the tree layout and arrange the nodes. We create a new instance of the tree layout and set its direction from top to bottom. We set enable assistance to true. This property, combined with the tree layout assistant field of the nodes, allows us to arrange certain nodes under each other rather than following the general rule of the tree layout algorithm. If we refresh the page, we can see that the diagram is now well arranged. We cannot see the whole of it because the canvas is too small. Calling the resize to fit items method tells the diagram to make its canvas as wide as possible in order to accommodate all of its items. Now we can see the whole of our diagram. It is well arranged. We note that the links point in the opposite direction of what we want to show. In our sample, we want to indicate which department reports to which. This is impossible in a standard tree structure. So we make the links point from the root to the children in order to create a proper tree. But we will use the head and base shape properties of each link to make them appear reversed. We use the getLinks method to get all diagram links, cycle through them, and set its base shape to triangle. This means that at its start, the link will have a filled arrow, a triangle. Its head is null, which means there will be no head. This way, the link will appear reverted. We will do also some styling on the links. We create a theme and a new style. This style uses a gray stroke and sets no shadow to the items that use it. We bind it to diagram link. If we refresh the page, you will see that now the links look reverted and the shadow is gone. Note how the assistant nodes come under each other. In the general version of the layout, they will be symmetrical to each other and their parents. Now they are arranged as a block. Now we'll add coloring of the nodes on mouse over. We handle the mouse move event for the diagram canvas and use the get cursos pos method of the utils class of the control to get the current mouse position. 
We convert it to diagram coordinates and ask the diagram if there is node at this point. If there is, we get the brush of its underlying component. We assign this brush to the background component, which, as you remember, is the underlying rectangle. We use the get outgoing and get incoming methods of the node to cycle through all arrows that go out from it or come to it. We paint them red. If we test the sample, we see that the colors really change on mouse over. They don't change back after the mouse leaves a node. There is one other problem. The red arrow of the node is sometimes drawn before arrows of other nodes and thus get covered by them. We will correct that as well. We add a new global variable called colored node. We keep it in the node that is currently under the mouse cursor. If no node is under the cursor but there is colored node, we reset its color and the color of its links. From the color overlap of arrows, we use the Z index property. We set the Z index of all diagram pointers to 0. And when a node is under the mouse, we set the Z index of its pointers to 1. This guarantees they are drawn after the other connectors are drawn. We reset its Z index to 0 when the mouse leaves the node. Now our application behaves the way we want it. Nodes and links change color when the mouse is over them and revert to their original colors when the mouse leaves. We have one more thing to add. We will add zoom functionality to the application through the zoom control. This way we can easily examine the whole graph if we want to. We add another canvas to the HTML page. We will use it to create the zoom control. We create the zoom control and set its target to be the diagram. We set the initial zoom factor to 55. Now we can see the whole diagram. When we hover over nodes, they change color, as well their arrows. Everything works as it should. And this is the end of this video tutorial. You can find a link to download the source code of the project in the video description. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.